Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we'll be looking at the 2021 CXE Mathematics Paper 2. And without further ado, we'll get right into it. Now my very first question seems to be a fraction. And it says using a calculator or otherwise, calculate the exact value of 1 and 4 over 7 divided by 2 thirds minus 1 and 5 7. Alright, there are two ways we can do it. Alright, so we can do it using the manual approach or we can also do it using a calculator let's state the manual approach now before we start doing this question the thing that we always need to remember is bid mass all right now bid mass is the order of operation b i d m a s bracket indices division multiplication addition and subtraction so i know for sure i'm going to have to do the division part first so let's get right into it now to make this easy i'm going to turn this into an improper fraction so I'm going to say 7 times 1 is 7 plus 4. That's 11 over 7 divided by 2 thirds. Now what we normally do with division is that normally when we divide is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it becomes 11 over 7 multiplied by 3 over 2. Of course you realize here that there is nothing to break down. So we simply multiply across meaning numerator by numerator so 11 times 3 that's 33 and 7 times 2 that's 14 so i've taken care of that part now let's go into the subtraction part so we have 33 over 14 subtract we could also turn this into a improper fraction so i'm going to say 7 times 1 is 7 plus 5 that is going to give me 12 over 7. now of course i'm going to have to find the lcm whenever we subtract our add all right, so the LCM of 7 and 14 would be 14. And it's the lowest number that 14 and 7 can go into without leaving a remainder. Now, 14 into itself is 1, and we use that 1 to multiply the numerator, which is 33. And I'm going to remain at 33. 7 into 14 is 2, and I'm going to use that 2 to multiply the 12, which is my numerator, which gives me 24. So this becomes 33 minus 24. Now that is going to give me 9 over 14. Now my job is to check if this can be broken down any further. At this moment, it can't be broken down. And so that is where we're going to actually leave it as 9 over 14. All right, guys. Now, since we have worked it out manually, we're going to see how the calculator or how we can actually use a calculator to check if whether or not our answer is correct. Or you could have used a calculator to work it out in the first place. All right, let's go. We have 1 and 4 seventh. So in order to get a mixed fraction here, I'm going to press shift, press the fraction bar, and I'm going to have 1 and go across 4, and I go down 1 and 4 seventh divided by 2 thirds. So I could press 2, then the fraction bar, then 3. And then, of course, you have subtract, shift again, fraction bar to get a mixed fraction, 1, and I go across. 5 over 7 and I simply press the equal sign that's 9 over 14 in my calculator so I'm positive that my answer is actually correct so would I want to work it out manually or I want to use a calculator to work it out and put on the answer either way works all right let's go down to the next question now the next question which is 1b says that when Megan started working, she was paid $85 each week. After six months probationary period, her pay was increased by 20%. How much was she paid each week after the increase? Now, of course, probationary period is that first period where you're probably being observed to see how you do until you get into the whole hang of the job, all right? So you can manage the job, so you're gonna, they're going to start paying you what you should really get. Now, there are two ways to look at this. I could increase it by 20% or I could find the increase by simply finding 20% of 85. Now, please remember that percentage means per 100. So I'm going to say that increase equal 20 over 100 multiplied by 85. All right. Now, of course, I could work this out using factors of numbers, but the easier way to do it is simply use a calculator and work this out, right? So you're going to go 20 over 100, and of course, you come across multiplied 
by 85 equal at 17 so she's her pay is going to be increased by 17 dollars all right so how much is she paid so she knows she's going to be paid all right you can write a statement 85 dollars plus the increase which is 17 which is going to give me 102 dollars that is one way to look at it here's a second way the amount that she was paid initially represents 100 percent all right, if I increase that by 20%, it becomes 120%. So what do I do? I'm going to say 120%. Once again, percentage means per 100. So I'm going to have over 100 multiplied by 85. Now, the 100% would give me about the original value, which is 85. And the 20% would add the $17. So at the end of the day, it would give me the overall total that she would get. Let's see if this makes sense. All right, this should be equal. So let me pull up the calculator. All right, so I'm just going to go back now and change it to 120%. I don't even have to clear the calculator. Let me just go back and put one here. So it's 120% over 100 multiplied by 85. And there you go. This is equal to $102. Now, please remember, though, the dollar sign is not money. It's just a random number, an arbitrary number. So we have to put in the dollar sign. All right, please note that. Now, let's take it down from B to question C. And as you can see here that question C has several parts. So let's get right into it. I'm going to go for red this time. In 1965, the population of country A was 2,714,000. In 2015, the population was 3,663,900. And we can see there that there's a population increase. Would we expect that? More kids are being born each year as you go ahead. So I write the population in 2015 correct to three significant figures. Now, significant figures represent this first set or the first three non-zero digit. And of course, zero can be significant, may I add, if it is found between two significant figures. All right, so let's get into it. So this is the population. And of course, notice it says in 2015. Now, the first significant figure is three. Then you have six. Now, before I get to the third significant figure, let me go right here and says it's six. Now, what is my job? Since I want three significant figures, I'm going to look at the number to the right to determine what to do with the six. Should I round up or should I leave it? Now, the rule is that if the number to the right is five or more, you round up one position, but if it's less than five, it remains. So it's going to remain because the number to the right of that third significant figure is three. Now, that three now will be replaced by zero and every other position would be taken by zeros, all right? So zero in the nine position, and I can put my other two zeros. So let me just put some commas in here for you to see it. So it's 3,660,000. And of course, you can see how this makes sense. We can round off because in this case, with the size of the population, this would be an effective estimation of what the population does look like. All right, part B. Write the population in 1965 in standard form. Okay. All right, so this is a population in 1965. Standard form is the same thing as scientific notation. Now, when you put a number in scientific notation, the number to the left of the point is a digit from one to nine. Now, always remember that the point in a whole number is always gonna be at the end out here. Now, of course, as we know, the point does move. It is the digits that will move, all right? But as a shortcut method, we normally try to say, all right, this is how many positions we move. Because we're going to move until the number to the left of the point is a digit from 1 to 9. So we're going to have to move 1, 2, 3. Not there yet. I have 2,000 out there. I need to move. Move. The number to the left now is 27. So it has to be a number from 1 to 9. So I need the next move right there. So look at what happens now. This becomes 2.714. I don't need to put about the zeros as the zeros will come in when I multiply by the power of 10. So times 10, because, I'm, because I need to go back to the right to preserve the original number. All right. I need to move to the right to preserve the original number. So I know that the power is going to be a positive power. So let us see how many positions we had moved. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So times 10 to the 6. Because with scientific notation, you can't change the value of the number. The value of the number remains. 
All right, and this does make some sense because since this was million, which normally indicates to me that six zeros, this is what it looks like in scientific notation. Very important concept here. All right, so that is it in scientific notation. We also call it standard form. Determine the percentage increase from 1965 to 2015. All right, before you can get into percentage increase, you need to talk about the increase. Now, how much did it increase by? This becomes an arithmetic problem. So I need to take the population in 2015, which is 3,663,900, and I need to subtract the population in 1965, which is 2,714,000. And of course, this becomes calculator work. So what I'm gonna do right away is to pull in my calculator. And let me go down a bit so I can have some more space. So my calculator comes in on this one, on. So I have 3,663,900, and I'm going to take away 2,714,000. All right, so the increase was 949,900. All right, let's go. So that's 949,900. That is the increase. So it says determine the percentage increase from 1965. So the, so the, in other words, it would have increased in 1965. So we are treating 1965 as the original amount. So therefore the increase has to go over the population in 1965 because that's where it's increasing from. So I'm gonna have 949,900 over the population in 1965. That's where it increased from. So that's over 2,714,000. And of course, percentage means per 100. So I'm going to multiply this by 100. Good. Bring in my calculator now. So on, so 949,900 fraction bar over 2,714,000. All right, go across, percentage is per 100, so times 100 is equal to 35%. So it was a 35% increase, a pretty uh, relatively high increase, if, you, if I may say so. All right, so now remember the critical thing here is what you put the number over. It, when I say it increased, it would have increased from 1965. 1965 was therefore the original amount before the increase. And so the increase has to go over the original amount for me to determine what the increase was or what the percentage increase was. I hope that's not too difficult. All right. Now down to D. And of course, this becomes a ratio question. Ratio and proportion. All right. It says a ratio of teachers to male students to female students in a school 3 to 17 to 18. All right. If the total number of students in the school is 630, determine the number of teachers in the school good now technically speaking here's the next way that we can look at this question all right so the teacher makes up three parts the females are the males are the males make up 17 parts and the females make up 18 parts but notice what they did is to give us a total number of students in the school so you're talking about the proportion of females combined with a proportion of males would give me 630. That's when you combine the female and the male population. Now, the simplest way of working out a ratio question like this is to determine what one part is because the parts are proportional. So you have three parts here, you have 17 parts here, you have 18 parts. They are proportional. So if I can find out what one part is, then the three parts that represents teachers, I can also find out. Now, since they didn't give me the males separate from the females, I would also need to combine that proportion. All right. So the portion for students would be 17 parts of males and 18 parts for females. So I'm going to have to combine these two. All right. I hope... We understand what's going on here. Combine these two because this is the portion that presents 
the students. Of course, male and female combined will be the students. All right, so this is going to be 35 parts. Now, when I combine it, because I know that these combined give me 35 parts, and that 35 parts represent 630, I can now find out what one part of the ratio is. So one part, I would simply take the 630, and I'm going to divide that 630 by 35. Good. So if I divide, so on 630 divided by 35 gives me 18. So one portion represents 18 persons. Now, of course, notice that teachers would be three parts out of that ratio. So I can say the number of teachers, right? So I'm just shortening that, would be three times the amount that one portion is. It's three portions, and the amount for one portion is 18. Good. Now, of course, in the exam, you don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to go three, three times 18. And that's going to give me 54. So I'm going to have 54 teachers. All right. Very interesting concept right here. 54 teachers in order to cover the 630 population. All right. So that's it for question one. We're